Hello again. I just wanted to expand on one of the topics I touched on briefly in my last video about hearing phenomena. Reese talked about this also, and thank you for reminding me as I don't, I, I kind of take it for granted. When I went to bed last night, I was told um, you have to tell YouTube that good entities can cause hearing to change also. And that was kind of a semi-quote. My ears then uh, rang for about 20 minutes or so until I went to sleep, accompanied by seeing uh, blue and green and violet spirit, which I thought of as being myself because these are the qualities that I most have in my aura, but the face looked nothing like me, as obviously our spirit probably doesn't match our face. I've always had outstanding hearing since I was a child. Um, it, well, it's really hard to tell what other people's hearing is like. I don't know how many times I've heard people talking about me or, you know, overheard conversations or whatnot or whatever. Now it kind of just floats by. I don't really dwell on it very much. But back in the day, it was really kind of an ego-stomping thing to where I didn't like what people were saying about me or like that they were talking about me and I would confront them. But now I just kind of don't even care at all. <laughs> Over the last few years, my hearing has gotten even better, kind of at the same time as my psychic ability has improved. Sometimes I will hear, I can, I'll put the pieces together more about overheard conversations based on the person's energy or based on what they are acting like before and afterwards so that I can I can piece together different conversations that might be important to know, um, like in a work situation. This happened before, and now I probably wouldn't even focus on it that much. Sometimes parts and pieces of my brain or whatever will focus on something like that <laughs> behind my back, so to speak. So they can do, they can do that. That's fine. It just, it brings a bigger picture of my world to me and that's good that's always good to have hearing people's thoughts was one of the one of the very first things that started me on uh, on kind of the spiritual path and wanting to better myself but that's gotten less the need to hear and process the thoughts of others strangers really it's really kind of gone away now I will focus more on what their energy is like, what their emotional state is kind of like. I won't need to go into their mind and and dig around or anything. It's not like you dig around. It's just that you, you get what's going on in there. This ability has actually kind of decreased as I have raised my awareness and not wanting to know and raise my vibration to where I don't match the average vibration of the average person. Not to say that, you know, my vibration is exceptionally high or anything like that. It's just different. My vibration is different. And that won't match to people, and I won't need to hear their thoughts. It would be like taking a step backwards, and I don't need to take steps backwards. <laughs> Over the summer, uh, I went camping and slept outside. I don't go camping very much. And sleeping outside kind of raised the process of echo echolocation into my awareness. I could see images of things around me based on the sounds that the insects were making. Seeing sound is really a strange thing, but it ties in with the psychic ability. And we've all experienced this, 
being able to see things with sound, even even like on the phone, you know, you can tell if somebody's in the bathroom talking to you on the phone, you're like, oh man, are you taking a dump right now or whatever, you know? And they're like, no, 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 and you know, and you know they are. Well, maybe you talk on the phone too much, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you can do this in different scenarios and maybe tell if there's someone in the room that's not talking while you're talking to somebody on the phone or or things like that. You get kind of a mental image of the of the scenery. And the more you focus and have less thought, the more you're, you're able to do it. Although it's not as easy when you're talking, obviously, because you're focusing on what you're saying. Then there's, of course, hearing voices. It's kind of a little bit different. Um, disembodied voices, that is. And this can be hard to tell the difference between what's a real person talking and what's actually in your mind. I know this because at times I can hear my neighbors inside their house, which is 100 feet away. Well, how do I really know if I'm reading their thoughts or hearing their words? I can't really always tell. <laughs> maybe they can hear me right now. That would be cool. Maybe, they're, maybe they can come on and watch this video and then get some clues. <laughs> this kind of also ties in with the, the ghostly experiences that I've had. I've kind of been told that, and I believe it now, that I have a, a group of spirits that hang around me. You know, they're kind of like my, you know, they're my spiritual friends. I have more um, spiritual friends than I do real friends. And that can be an interesting thing to adjust to. It's not exactly as fulfilling a relationship, but on other levels, it really is more fulfilling. Things that will happen when I become aware of this and especially the first time it happened. So I was standing there doing something. I think I was doing something in the kitchen. And I saw some kind of figure walk up to me from the side. Step into my body. And all of a sudden I felt like I was a different person. And I'm like looking around like, this is kind of cool. Wow, this person's really interesting. And then and then I saw the figure walk away. This actually happened at work. Because there was a ghost that lived there, and I believe it was the ghost or spirit. I don't think a ghost is the same as a spirit. Ghost would be an image, whereas a spirit would have some kind of consciousness to where I was able to connect with the consciousness of the being. This happens from time to time, and I just have to not freak out too much, even though when the consciousness comes into my body, they kind of freak out a little bit. Well, my consciousness is scooted over a little bit and is sitting there like, what is this consciousness doing? I'm just a person. Don't freak out, <laughs> you know? And then they'll, they'll either leave or they can adjust themselves into my consciousness and become more one with me and not freaked out. In that way, having you know more than one soul in your body at one time, I'm not really aware of people that would say that has happened to them. If any of you have, I'd love to hear about it. But anyways, I'm out of here. Thank you for watching again. Namaste.